bit, and then they continued, and I was like, do I have to watch the rest yes, of this? Yes, that's what I'm I going to have to talk I, about this, so <laughs> people keep asking to. me about it. And well, I people said, kept, yeah, people kept asking, so yeah, like, all right. All you good to go? Mm-hmm. It's Functionized Podcast time. If you're listening to this podcast, which I'm sure you are, and you are local, even better, stop in. DM us at Functionized, call us 848-444-9032, and on me, I would love to get you scanned. Learn every nuance about you from your head to your toes, your entire body composition, disease risk factors, you name it, we will scan it, and we'll go over it, see where you stand. That's right. (laughs) Fit 3D. Visit www.functionize.com also the brand new website of the fit lab fitlabnj.com that is fitlabnj.com and we're getting started with this podcast pull over the side of the road take a screenshot post it tag us at functionized and we will start following you grow your own following one functionized step at a time we have some very special guests with us if they weren't special they wouldn't be here right that's right (laughs) Our first introduction here is Liz Abate. Liz is a board-certified nutrition and wellness consultant at Health and Happiness, where she will guide you in your journey towards greater wellness and energy. Liz specializes in creating organic, wholesome meals to assist you and your family in enjoying healthy, nourishing meals. You can expect 100% quality ingredients in every meal. Liz loves food. I mean, really, really loves food. Really loves food, yeah. (laughs) She does. Liz started Real Food, Real Good, to show you that eating real food instead of the processed junk that makes people sick doesn't have to be tasteless or make you feel deprived. In fact, her goal is to blow your taste buds away. Eating healthy food can be delicious and healing all at the same time. Liz, being certified nutrition and wellness consultant, is also a level one CrossFit certified trainer. Actually, level two. I'm sorry. What? Yeah. Even Upgrade. better. <laughs> smarter than I thought. Moved Even up. better. <laughs> She's also a CrossFit kids trainer. Yes. Yeah. And somehow, and I don't know where this fits in, but we'll figure this out in a second, has a <laughs> master's degree in accounting from Wagner College. We're also joined by Ken Nodes, longtime career on Wall Street. He is a wolf, but not that wolf, and currently owns... <laughs> CrossFit Persist in Morganville, New Jersey. Yes, it is. Ken and Liz, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. So first things first, Liz, a master's degree in accounting. Oh, boy. (laughs) When I typically think of accountants, I think of, I don't want to offend everybody, but they won't be listening to this then, really big, hairy, fat guys. Oh, my God. Oh, man, right. Women who are like, need two chairs to sit in. Um, and so you are you are yeah, not that's, that. That's, that's <laughs> not the mold <laughs> of a typical accountant. So, Liz, can you kind of, how did you get into accounting in the first place, oh. and then how did your fitness, health, wellness journey really begin? So, accounting became natural to me. I was just something I was good at, um, and I, I don't know how to explain it, but you kind of just get in the position where you just got to keep on moving up the ladder right so you go through college because that's what you're supposed to do and then you start your master's degree because you want to at least have a little level up from other accountants Um, then when I started working in the city working 12 to 15 hours a day um, I just kind of went through the hustle and bustle um, had two kids and then it was just really hard to juggle everything Mm -hmm. I did have a passion in health and fitness on the side and that was kind of getting a little backseat because I was working so much and then I remember I was on vacation and I said you know what my boss was like emailing me while I was on vacation I said I can't do this no more (laughs) I'm gonna go get uh, back to school get my certification in nutrition and in CrossFit and take the leap of faith and that's where I am now and I just figured you know especially for being a mom it was just important for me to be around more often with the kids rather than sitting behind a desk watching and feeling my body like deteriorate sitting at a desk all these hours. <laughs> what did you do when you were going to that grind of the accountant to keep yourself from falling apart? What did oh, somebody do? I actually have timers on my phone of when to stand up and walk around, when to eat and when to drink. 
um, just because you do get lost in time of sitting there for so long. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't even know that you went to work and the sun was, you know, still gone. It was dark. And then when I leave, it was still dark. So it was just like, where do the hours go when you're just behind that computer? So it's important to make sure that you're constantly moving and you're still maintaining, you know, the right amount of calories you need to eat and whatnot. So I just had to make sure I was always... So you're okay. Every two hours, let me have some more almonds. Let me go grab some slices <laughs> of turkey. Uh, yeah, yeah, I had to. That's so, a big thing, you know, being able to manage what you have set in front of you, but then still be mindful of what gets you through the days. Right. You know, so having that proper preparation, and especially being a busy mom, traveling back and forth, you know, getting yourself ready, getting the kids ready, you know, it takes a lot out of a person. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's like the number one thing I hear from people is that they don't have time, they don't have mm -hmm. time. It literally took me maybe 15 minutes to set up the timers in my phone, and then it's set every single day. So it was just like, okay, time to do this. Awesome. I'll get up and do it. So would you agree <laughs> that you, the time does exist, but you actually have to want to do it? Yes, 100%. Yeah. And if you don't set that time up front to prep, Mm -hmm. whether it's your meals or it's your schedule or it's your your priorities that's those five p's the proper yeah. pressure yeah. Yeah. prevents yeah. poor performance mm. yeah, close enough there you go, John. <laughs> she's the accountant <laughs> 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 Ex -account. <laughs> uh, i think the other p in that would be prioritize you know you have to prioritize yourself and that's the problem that you run into with a lot of most people is they just don't you know mm -hmm. like especially mothers you know, as Liz was saying, once you get busy doing stuff, it's all about the kids and your family and stuff like that. And you don't prioritize yourself. Then when you don't prioritize yourself, that declines. Absolutely. And then you use the excuse that, you know, well, my kids and everything have to come first. But getting people to understand that they're, they have to come first in order for them to be good, any good to their kids and their family, is that's the tough, tough part. It's a tough sell. Oh, and then some. It and it's tough to, <clears throat> as you said, sell. Why well, yeah. have to sell somebody on yeah. that for themselves? Yes. Right. Uh, one thing I like to tell individuals and fully believe, are you going to be the 100% best version of yourself at all times? If you are ignoring yourself, then you're not giving the best to your kids or whatever other excuse that you're using right. instead of that. Right. You take those 15 minutes, Liz, as you said, and yeah. bam, and you're a better mom now all of a sudden, aren't you? Yep, 100%. Why CrossFit? Why? I mean, why, CrossFit? why not yoga? Why not spin? <laughs> why not? I mean, go and um, run. Well, where that came from? So I was um, 30 years old, had two kids already at the time. Like I said, working those crazy hours, um, and I just felt my body deteriorating. So one day, literally out of nowhere, I decided to sign up for a Tough Mudder, and mm -hmm. the Tough Mudder was like three months away. And I said, okay, I need something hardcore, something that's going to get me, because I never worked out a day before in my life either before CrossFit. Um, so I needed something intense and something quick. So that's when I found CrossFit and then it just became addicting from there. And I just keep going back. <laughs> nice. And now I'm a level two certified and yeah. it's you know part of my everyday life. Absolutely. So how often would you continue to do the wads currently is it an everyday thing for it, you or are you kind it of is an everyday thing um i do take sundays off mm -hmm. and sometimes saturdays depending on my kids schedule not to put my kids before <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like we Saturday just contradicted morning. you're but hitting five days right there i'm hitting though. five days yes at the very least it's five days one a days two a days no two just two one a day. day okay but body can't handle more than that crossfit is like i asked because crossfit is a brutal sport it can be yeah if you don't take care of yourself, if mm -hmm. you don't have the proper instruction right. in what you're doing, because right. uh, a lot of these dynamic movements are well, pretty rough on the body, right? Yeah, they are. Well, the key, I think you said, you, you referred to it as the it's a tough sport. If mm -hmm. you look at it as a sport, which many do, and that's awesome, then it, it, it's difficult. It's not easy. But we, most of the time, what we're trying, most of the people get in there, it's not a sport. It's just a way to get healthy and stay fit and get some exercise in, you know? And, and not get bored with it. And not get bored with changing. it. <laughs> you know, when you're in the environment, admittedly, especially if you're competitive and everybody's a little bit competitive, mm -hmm. you know, you can treat it like a sport, which can be a benefit because it pushes you, but can also be a downfall because sometimes you take it a little bit too far. You know? It certainly can. So. You know, and it has to be that right balance. Yeah, it, you know, it, it, with absolutely. Everything. No you know, question. No matter what type of your training that yeah. you're doing, yeah. you've got to be able to know the yeah. limits Ex and then yeah. give yourself that time you to recover. you got to listen to your body. Exactly. And, you know, know when to pull it back. Let's well, so how about you, Ken. How did you go from Wall Street to 
the box. The box. The box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, that's it's it's a funny thing because few people even at the box realize that that's what I did before. So for 24 years, I was I uh, worked uh, as a hedge fund. I ran a hedge fund, mm-hmm. and that just can't got to a point where it's just enough was enough. I didn't want to do it anymore. The passion wasn't there. Um, there were some other uh, ex- external things that you know came up that happened, but uh, in the end of the day, what what I did was took a step back and said, okay, I don't want to do this. What do I want to do? And the thing, I had gotten into CrossFit pr- prior to this. So I've been doing CrossFit for about a year or so, maybe two. Um, and I said, well, the thing I, I do anyway and I always have my entire life is health and fitness, whether it be, you know, looking up nutrition tr- fads. And this goes back into the, you know, the 90s, the 80s and 90s when I was young and following you know, looking at Muscle and Fitness magazine and Flex <laughs> magazine and reading everything they put out there and trying everything they put out except for the steroids. Um, uh, and so that's just what I did. That's what my passion was. That's what I started doing. So I got certified at Coach for a little while, and there weren't many other, you know, boxes in the area. Mm-hmm. At the time, actually, there was only one, you know, so I decided to open up one and see what happened. And here we are nine years later. Wow, great. Uh, Congrats. And, uh, yeah, and then... Luckily enough, at some one point, uh, about a year in, Liz walked in the door because she had signed up for that Tough Mudder, which I happened to be doing also. Yeah? Yeah. I happened to be signed, uh, you know, in and out too. There's a bunch of people in the box, so it actually worked out well. And uh, as I said, the rest is history. You know, from there, she got into the nutrition side of it, which we're always trying to push people at the box to do, which is the hardest thing. Mm-hmm. You know, as like you're talking about how hard uh, and intense CrossFit can be. Like, that's nothing getting people into you know everybody comes in they want to work out that's the fun part teach them how to climb ropes or with the barbell it's fun mm-hmm. nobody wants to do nutrition they yeah. just no There's no that's, you're absolutely right they, just, they can work, work out all day yeah, but just don't nobody wants to, to listen to it they don't want to hear about it yeah it's a mental block yeah that people and it's have. the most important part mm-hmm. you know I, like we always tell people who come in for nutrition you know like they uh go ask them put up the uh um, hierarchy of importance for you know athletes mm-hmm. or human beings in general basically and the base of the pyramid that they put up there is nutrition that's the first thing before after that it's metabolic conditioning and weightlifting and gymnastics and stuff like that's that that's more fun yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes but nutrition everybody's like yeah it's the base that's where everything starts nobody wants to hear about no it. one wants to hear about yeah. it because we tell them you know abs are made in the kitchen yeah you know it, it really starts there it's true how many people literally will work abs and abs yes. and abs and, and never see a thing right yeah right. and then yeah. if they finally do start um, eating better, which yeah. is the best way to put it, then, yeah, they start to appear. Yeah. Weird. How do you two find that the transition from CrossFit-type activities occurs into a, a mud run of some sort, whether it be Tough Mudder, Spartan, um, you know, the plethora of different mud runs out there? I mean, I think most people that we find doing, a lot of people, you know, at our box do that along with competitions, different competitions. They sign up for those, them to give them a focal point, mm-hmm. uh, something to train for in, in the future, which is actually how I actually got into CrossFit was, you know, I worked out all the time. So I started like, I need something more. I need something to train for. So I started doing road runs, you know, just running mm-hmm. races and stuff with Spring Lake 5, all those things. I, I don't like running. I can't stand running, but I <laughs> right did it because it. it was something to, it was just something to train for. Mm-hmm. I got bored with it and I started doing triathlons. I had no idea what I was doing. You know, I didn't know how to train for it or anything like that. I would just sign up for them. I had something to train for, I would do them. And through training for them, I did a little research and stumbled across the, uh, upon the CrossFit website. And that's how I found it. I didn't, know it, didn't even know it existed that's before something. that. Um, but yeah, that's how most people, they just want something extra to train for, whether mm-hmm. it's a CrossFit competition, a Tough Mudder, or Spartan, you know, they put it, they sign up for three months in, in the future and then they have something that they have to work for and it kind of commits them a little bit to it. Absolutely. We, we be- definitely know that when you have a goal to yeah. work towards, you know, it starts with the SMART goals and like I'm a right. big believer in telling everyone, okay, well, what do you want to do this week? You know, what do you want to do next month? You know, what's your three month goal? Because when you can chunk it up and you've got something more tangible, mm-hmm. you don't find yourself wandering around going, what am I going to do today? Right. You know, what am plan, I doing tomorrow? Action, right. So I think, yeah, that makes a lot of sense for people. You know, they sign up and say, okay, now I got to get serious because yeah. now there's something, <laughs> right. there's a deadline. Yeah. <laughs> Our family personally enjoys CrossFit. We watch the games every year it's kind of like an event we yeah. make sure we're there watching 
we know the times, the competitions, we know who's in what place, and I mean, <laughs> we really get into it, yeah. watch the documentaries. What is the difference from what you've seen in the box compared to the world's fittest? It's there's a lot of difference. Yeah, a <laughs> lot. It, and honestly, I think the biggest difference is the approach. The approach is looking at it from a sport or as a exer- exercise modality. Mm-hmm. And I say exercise modality here because we're talking about the sport, but in reality, CrossFit is it's about nutrition. It's about overall health. Health. Mm-hmm. It, it's really the, the base of the whole thing. And uh, the idea is that you can come in, learn different skills, and approach all the different variables of fitness. Um, know in a short I mean most of the workouts that we do are on average between 10 and 15 minutes I find it takes longer to warm up yeah, yeah. it's pretty much <laughs> what it is you know we'll do a strength component and stuff like that but so if you get them together in an hour an hour class and the class is great because of the community setting mm-hmm. you know um, mm-hmm. you know it, it's just uh, that's the way most people gonna look at it now if you're training for it as a sport you want to compete in the games or a competition then you're talking about doing this a couple times a day and you basically your life has to be about your workouts training. and your recovery mm-hmm. and everything you do from your sleep to your nutrition is focused on and 99.9 percent of the people that walk into a crossfit gym are just showing up for an hour to de-stress work out and try to be healthy for a little bit they're not that's not what they're trying to do that's a group environment yeah close-knit yeah after and a while yeah. and uh, yeah. you, have you like being there right? yeah you like being there it's like your place to go and by the way you're going to work out while you're here but there's nothing wrong with that yeah, like mo- yeah, <laughs> yeah most of the people are just I need a place to go and hang out and with some like-minded people and have some fun absolutely you know? how about when it does come to nutrition what fads have you found that individuals keep gravitating to time and time again the good fads or the bad fads <laughs> <laughs> and everything in between <laughs> exactly um <laughs> I Whatever the uh, I'm gonna say like the shakes, the, the elimination the, where they eliminate stuff and people go for uh, the, quick the meal replacements. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, the quick fix things. Yeah. That I, I I I don't I can't wrap my head around that. Um, cause they always say to people, okay, that's good for now. You know, you got you got your weight loss that you wanted, and now what? You start eating food again, and your body doesn't know how to digest and break down certain types yeah. of foods because you lost that all. So um, I, I you know that I think is one mm. fad that I. That irks me the I most. Think most of the fads that you run into, whether it be, you know, I'll say it is a fad, but it's, we, I don't think it's a fad at all, but because we promote it, but we call it paleo, but uh-huh. it's nothing more than eating real food. But if you want to say paleo, you want to say uh, the zone, you want to say um, keto or vegetarianism or whatever the, you know, soup du jour is. Um, most of those you can take something from, there's some positive impact. That most people are going to get from those things. Mm-hmm. There's, there's always going to be arguments on either side, but the shakes, the quick fixes, there's just, there's nothing good coming from those things. They it's do, just they end up slowing down the metabolism. Yeah, when you yeah, actually just, eat. So if somebody, your goal is to lose yeah. ten pounds, you lose eight to ten pounds drinking a, a, you know, a shake, you know, once a day, and then having a salad for lunch. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, and you <laughs> lose those, you're going to lose those five or ten pounds while you're doing this. But are you going to do that for life? It's definitely you know, what not hap- maintainable. What happens a month <laughs> no. later? You know, right. Where are you? You're right back, back where up. you were. Exactly. You know, right. so everything that we always try to put out is, is, is the first question is, is, can you do that forever? You know, if you can't do it forever, then why do it? Just do something you can maintain. Mm-hmm. Live a healthy life doing things that are comfortable and are fun for you. And uh, the, results will, the results may not be what you looked like, what you wanted to when you started, but as you get comfortable, they'll, you know, you're gonna end up being where you want to be because you're gonna be happy. If you're doing one of these fad diets for a month, two, three months, eventually you're gonna come off it. But they're you know? sexy, they're fun, the yeah, marketing, exactly. pictures of people. I can look no, at that. I really? I saw come this on. movie star doing this, <laughs> this incredible diet. I want to try yeah. it. <laughs> it's just not sustainable. No. So. No, you're absolutely right. It's not sustainable. So, what, Liz, as the nutrition girl in the room right now? Yeah. Um, what do you typically subscribe to? So typically it is. Eat real foods. Um, nothing processed, right? Process is, I think, the biggest enemy out of everything. Um, and what's hard about the processing, the processed foods, is the marketing. So when you're going food shopping and you see, well, it says, you know, fat free and it says mm-hmm. no sugar and it says all this, well, they've eliminated, you know, some of the better quality ingredients and replaced it with chemicals. And people aren't reading the small fine print on the back. 
Um, they're just kind of looking at the big labels that are like right in their face saying, oh, well, this has to be healthy because it says, you know, it has this many grams of grains and, you know. Um, so I think that is my biggest um, fight with people to try to understand to read the small print mm -hmm. and the back of the box, not the main. So if you just eat real foods, meaning that the actual ingredient is the food that you're eating, um, not only will it help you reach your goals of whatever it may be, it could be weight loss or it could even be muscle gain, um, you're healthy. You know, so the goal is to eat healthy and then everything else will follow mm. in, into place. What is the biggest struggle you find in working with individuals when it does come to nutrition? No one wants to do the work. No one wants to cook. No one wants to. I was just um, say, what work? I'm just eating here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can do this all day long. Well, that, that's actually how the, the second part of the business came up is because nobody no wanted to do the work. No one wants to cook. So. Right. In initially, it was the nutrition, right? It was just yeah. she was just giving people nutritional guidance, formulating meal plans for them, giving them, actually this is this is what you should eat every day this week from mm -hmm. from the second when you wake up to the second you go to sleep. She would lay it all out for them, and they were having trouble with it because yeah, they after didn't, about two they weeks, I'm not cooking. I'm yeah, not, I don't, don't want to cook all this. I don't want to prepare all this food and stuff. So that's where you know she beat started preparing so meals. So it's all right. Well then, I'll start preparing the meals for you too and next thing is going to be going to the house and actually spoon feeding <laughs> yeah. clothes, but, um, I don't want to heat the food up now <laughs> um, but yeah that's definitely it is the, the prepping and the cooking people tend to they rather just open up a bag mm -hmm. and pour you know it's cereal or not like the way society's gone yeah you know everybody's too busy for everything yes we're too busy for everything yeah. and so you want what's it's easiest convenient and convenient I mean, how often do we get home, or on the way home, realizing it's 8 o'clock at night, kids need to be in bed at a half hour. And they haven't eaten. They haven't eaten. Uh -huh. There's a lot of stuff in the fridge, but it needs to be cooked and prepared. By the time right. we cook it, prepare it, it's going to be yeah. 9 o'clock, right. past bedtime, mm -hmm. et cetera. Yeah. yeah. And it's hard. And I, I mean, always tell people when they run into that situation, like, just run into, like, a Whole Foods and grab a uh, rotisserie chicken for $5. You know, mm -hmm. and you have a whole dinner right there. You know, and it's... And we have done oh that. Oh, my goodness. How many times have you done that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm so you know, like, <laughs> like, you know I'll, get, I'll get out the veggies <laughs> and, you know, That's the kids, it. like, you, you know, do not need to stop very at McDonald's. Lucky. Yeah. And yeah. Our kids have never been to McDonald's. That is awesome. That They're great. 12, 7, and 4. Fantastic. They've never been to a McDonald's. I'm very happy and proud to say that. <laughs> wow, aren't we so awesome now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, we okay. used to live I at Taco am, Bell, but our kids uh, have never been to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> that was pre-kids. You know, we all have yeah. a past. <laughs> yes. We were just oh, talking yeah. last night, and somebody today in the Fit Lab actually brought it up. Said, "Jim, I mean, you guys have always been perfect forever." I'm like. We were just talking about this last night. So mm -hmm. we'd go to Wendy's multiple times a week for the spicy chicken. Sure. Mm -hmm. Taco Bell when we weren't at Wendy's. Um, it was just, I think, Hot Pockets. Yeah, we've talked about Hot Pockets. You know, yeah. you, get, you go to college and you can eat pretty much Absolutely. anything and everything you want. And ramen then, noodles. I mean, that was like 10 was cents a man. <laughs> yep. I would make them for my Absolutely. roommate across really the hall. You, take you, know? you throw it in. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it, it wasn't always an easy thing for us either you know right. we look back and we're like oh we had our chunky face yeah. you know everybody's <laughs> been yeah, there at least once stuff. but you know it take that wake up moment and sure. luckily it wasn't a major illness for us that a lot of people you know okay well now i'm diabetic and now you know i just had a heart attack and now i have to take care of myself you know luckily we we were able to start it before, before that, that but yeah. so often it's yeah. too late for many people right i mean processed foods it really is it's made to be addictive mm -hmm. right so that mm -hmm. people can buy more like have you ever opened up a bag of oreos and eaten less than one sleeve like you just you, don't. you can't you don't know <laughs> why like, would you, you, you open it you gotta eat it all it's like the right girl now. scout thin <laughs> man cookies you just don't yeah. buy girl no. scout cookies no. <laughs> there's a reason for that yes i remember watching someone who's greg glassman said that CrossFit can cure diabetes. Yeah. Nearly knocked me over at the time. Like, the how can he about? really he say really that? Said that. Yeah. That's a powerful statement. It's huge. When it comes to exercising, it doesn't have to be CrossFit, it can be mm -hmm. any, any type of exercise. Yeah. How much have you both found that it comes down to just working out or just nutrition? Or do you really have to combine? so much together this, this kind of sounds like a, a little battle that we had a couple of years ago so we would go he was obviously the fitness guy and i was the nutrition girl and it would start off he says no no liz it's 50 50. I said, uh uh no sure way and, and, and i think we're in agreement that it, it's 80 20 yeah. nutrition 
Um, only because of fitness, you're only doing it for at most an hour, maybe an hour and a half tops mm -hmm. of your day. You still yeah. have 20 plus hours, right? So depending on how you handle those other hours during the day is really what is dependent on your health and recovery of yeah. you know, what you put yourself yeah. through. Yeah. And that includes sleeping and meditation right. as well as mm -hmm. the food that you eat. Yeah. So finally, but finally, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Admittedly, so that you know, back down and like, all right, I did. Back down. <laughs> yeah, I, said, no, I can give you fifty-fifty. I'm not giving you any more than fifty-fifty, but uh, it is. It's more probably eighty-twenty. Well, seventy-thirty. No, no, no. Eighty-twenty. I'm gonna say eighty-twenty. Yeah. I was gonna say it depends. I think on the individual and what their goals are. Yeah. I mean, if somebody yeah. is gonna be a triathlete. You're going to be eating a lot more, yes. and sometimes it really doesn't matter as much as long as you're getting yeah. calories. You know, calories you can eat it. 20 bagels yeah. a day. Yeah. You're not going to notice right. one bit. And you, but you're going to have to put some road work in it and do some training. So mm -hmm. you can spend a lot of time on the training side of it. And exactly. Just get some calories in. For the housewife, so for the about. Wall Street guy who's really not working out too much. No. I'm going to say maybe even 90% nutrition. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just All right. <laughs> <laughs> it is. You know what? The longer longer you do this and you're in this field, you realize the people's biggest trouble is the nutrition side. You know, the exercise, you can, there's a lot of different forms of exercise, and you can find one that's, mm -hmm. whether it's CrossFit, whether it's doing Spartan races, whether it's, you know, just taking regular yoga classes, although I do think everybody needs to do some resistance training. I concur. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think... That, that you can find enough time to do, squeeze it in, whether it's 15 minutes here, 10 minutes there. Mm -hmm. um, you can find something that you enjoy doing that to you it's something that you're doing that's fun. Nutrition, on the other hand, nobody looks at nutrition as being something that they, this is fun to do. Every, what's fun is watching a football game with a pitcher of beer and a large pepperoni pizza in front of you. Mm -hmm. That's Wings, what, that's, right? that's, that's like Christian. Went. I see Christian yeah. taking seven. <laughs> yeah. that's, yes, that's it. Yeah. It's three o'clock today. Fun. That's what I'm going to start doing. <laughs> <laughs> you guys hurry up a little bit here. <laughs> the, uh, you know, eating, eating healthy, eating the right types of food, especially in the beginning, it's not what anybody wants to do. What do you both think that the greatest reason behind that is? Why are people, they know you're going to die. Mm. I mean, we do a scan at the Fit Lab. And we quantify, at times, you're going to die. And people are still resistant to any type of change. They think, I know it all. I just need to stop eating as much. I should have this, that, this. Sometimes it, they shouldn't be having that in the first place, especially even if we do their labs. It's like, nope, you should not be yeah. having lemon. You know, that just actually came up with a guy the other day. Big reaction to it. Um, but what do you both think is the main I think cog? A, a what, lot. What, a lot of different reasons, but I think I say mentality is the first one. But some people live their life saying, "Well, I'm going to die anyway, so I'm going to enjoy it." John Candy, oh, well, definitely I, said that. Yep. <laughs> he was <laughs> happy to right. yeah. anything. I'm not going to deprive myself. Right. Right. Um, but what people are missing out is that when you start eating the real foods and you start feeling that energy in your body, like you when you're the living, of life is right? Much better. I, I feel like when you live a certain way of eating the processed foods and stuff usually like well i'm still alive i'm still breathing and i'm still walking and everything mm -hmm. else is fine but until you eliminate all of that processed foods do you really feel inside your body come alive you know so until mm -hmm. you feel that you don't really know and i think it's just a more of a mentality issue that you have to get through get through the sugar withdrawals get through all of that and then i think you're people don't your like way. change really resistant to any type of change and mm -hmm. I know that it, we've it's gotten away from it but you know you go from the 70s and 90s for like the last 50 60 years we've been taught that carbs are our friends nobody cares about protein fats the enemy you know True. so everybody is just this is what I eat this there's there's nothing wrong with eating all these carbs because carbs aren't a problem right you know and now we have an obesity and the uh, diabetes epidemic going on you know so that was wrong, and but getting people out of that mindset and that switch is, it's happening, but it's slow. It's like moving a big ship, you know, it just have, it takes forever. And getting people to change their mindset on that. And if they're, if you happen to come from a ethnicity that eats a lot of rice or a lot of pasta, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, this is what my family grows up on. I know, but is, is it the best thing for you? Just because right. that's what everybody does doesn't mean that that's what's making it's that's healthy for you to do so getting them to change their mindset on that a little bit just get away from it a little for a little while i mean we all grew up then on you know eating sandwiches and bread and i know my personal story was that um 
you know, I actually started getting away from that before I opened CrossFit, but, you know, sitting at a trading desk in Wall Street, I noticed that every, myself included, everybody get that afternoon, start to doze off, you know, fine, and stuff like that. Well, mm -hmm. we all had pizza or big sandwiches, right? you know, beforehand. <laughs> so I started looking up, like, what can I eat instead of these sandwiches? Because I read through starting CrossFit that, you know, grains might be a problem, mm -hmm. you know? So I was just looking to not fall asleep after eating a sandwich at, on the trading desk, which good isn't start. really, isn't a good thing. Not, not, yeah. not, you so, money. Yeah, <laughs> so, right, exactly. So, um, I, you know, just tried it and I started realizing that, wait a minute, I'm, yeah, I'm not falling asleep anymore because mm -hmm. I don't get that sugar rush, but I'm also the heartburn that I always had. Like, I had heart, I had, you know, Tums in my bedside, I had Tums in my desk, I had Tums in my car, you know, I was just eating Tums all the time because I had heartburn. Oh, you work on Wall Street, stress, it wasn't the stress, it was the grains I was eating. Right. You know, once I stopped eating them, I didn't have any heartburn anymore. I haven't had it in, you know, like, I don't know, what is it, 13, 14 years now because I got rid of them. So those little things and getting people to change that, to actually realize that is, you know, it's, it's difficult. Yeah. It's hard. Nobody wants to change, you know, so. Well, if thy food be thy medicine, thy medicine be thy food, food, right? Amen. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, Chante, do you think is the biggest roadblock? Well, I know the accountability factor is huge mm -hmm. with people that I work with and changing that mindset. You know, it, it's easy for them to do it for a week and then they're like, okay, well this <laughs> happened and that party happened and Excuses. I have to go out, <laughs> right. So yeah, what the crap with Christmas, seriously. Yes. I know. <laughs> you know, it's start, everybody stops doing what they're doing from you know basically Halloween on because there's always a party and there's everything else to do. So what I have found is that those that have more accountability are better you know, to adhere to what it is because they don't want to have to report back to me, okay, well I fell off the wagon this week. I'm like, okay, well, then let's be better, you know, and it's, okay, well, what are you going to do? It's having them take the reins. You know, everybody can tell you what to do until you're blue in the face, right. but until the, they make that realization and they're like, a aha moment, and it comes from within, they're more likely to start adhering to the recommended changes. Mm -hmm. But it, it's something that has to come from the inside. Yeah. yeah. One size fits all? When it comes to nutrition? No. Why not? We're all human, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. No. Everybody's different. Um, you know, from, you know, you have some people that work overnight time. You have some people that are, you know, at a desk all day. You have some people. Um, <laughs> Keep going. Keep okay. going. <laughs> Do your thing. Um, so, yeah. So, it, it's not. Everyone is totally different, whether they have different activity levels and different, um, you know, patterns in their lifestyle. So you do need to tailor it, everything to them. Um, although I feel that the processed foods is still is something that is a one size yeah. fits all. I, I think in like the nutrition realm, everybody, like I said before, you can, you can take a little something from everything and there's always gonna be an argument on one side or the other and there's probably a little bit of truth somewhere in the middle on a lot of it. But one thing I think everybody, whether it be, you know, doctors, nutritionists, fitness experts, whatever, will agree on is that processed foods are just bad. There's, mm -hmm. just, there's no getting around that. Everybody needs to eat real food. I think that's the one thing that everybody can, uh, or should at least agree on. Is if you just eat real food, mm -hmm. you know, and again, you get into the definition of what is real food. <laughs> but you can pull it from yeah. the ground, yeah. <laughs> if you box, can pick it from a tree. Yeah. <laughs> if, if it's gonna die in a matter of you know, days after you get it, it's, it's neat. Yes, Probably if it could stay on your shelf for yeah. two years, yeah. it is it's not real. Not good. <laughs> it's the nuclear Twinkie, yes, you know. It's <laughs> forever. I mean, technically, yes, it is forever. <laughs> <laughs> Survive nuclear fallout. <laughs> I mean, technically, even shakes are processed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When people say, I'm eating clean, but they're having three way shakes a sure. day, technically, yeah. that, is, that is processed. That's processed. So it Absolutely. comes down to oftentimes. What, what degrees? Yeah, what degree of clean? Yeah. What degree? I don't want to say clean. What degree of? That's the no no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is clean eating, yeah. right? That's Liz's food. <laughs> that's yeah. <what's> clean. <laughs> uh, that that that's true, and that's actually an uh, excellent point, um, which we you know get and we deal with a lot because we always recommend that people after their workouts have some t maybe a, a, uh, a s small amount of carbs and some form of protein mm -hmm. right after they work out, like in that one hour window, right? And your body's just craving it. It's a perfect time for your muscles mm -hmm. to suck it in. And, Absolutely. And uh, 
myself is I'm part of this. I don't want to eat food after work, especially after a crossword work. I feel I'm, a little nauseous. Yeah, I'm not hungry. Like, so, mm -mm. well, how can I get that? A protein shake. Right, so I, that's the one time a day that I do have a protein shake. Mm -hmm. It's right after I work out. Now that shake, I try to. I've looked at all of them. We actually even oh looked in, looked into trying to make, make our, our own, own because there's so much garbage <laughs> out there. If you know anyone, it. let me yeah, know. <laughs> <laughs> try to make our own. Try protein. to connect with somebody. Yeah. Um, what what but, are you two uh, trying to use for your own? Um, well, we, I I have a I, I believe I have a toler intolerance for whey, so I try to eliminate the whey. And I think what we're using now is an egg base. Yeah, it's 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 actually a uh, has some egg white protein in it, but it's mostly beef. Mm -hmm. beef. beef. Yeah, right. In it too. So um, I also I tried it. I don't know if I have sensitivity to it, but I just figured I would try it. Also, um, I always used whey. We used to use Progenics. You know, that was kind of the CrossFit thing du jour, which is relatively clean. It has I think three ingredients in it. You know, which is huge for um, any protein and stuff. But uh, it's the way you still have to look <laughs> at different. Um, so you could always just take a big piece of steak, throw it in a blender, and uh, oh yeah, drink it out there. If, that, that. if that was doable. <laughs> <laughs> palatable i don't know that's the probably the hardest thing with most people too is they'll you know if it doesn't taste good you know they're not going to do it you know so if you can give them a shake you know, if it doesn't taste good but the reason it tastes good is because it has a lot of shit in it mm, <laughs> right no, plain so and simple sugar yeah and what was that dolce de leche plasma protein that i used to like yes <laughs> it, was a, it was a beef plasma but it was a dolce it was delicious. De leche. it was, it was <laughs> not delicious it was not delicious <laughs> it was not you know i was training last summer for, you know, my, my figure show and doing grass-fed whey protein, you know, completely unflavored. And I'd throw it in with, you know, unsweetened cocoa powder and peanut butter and it's... flax milk. And it, all of those things came up on my food sensitivities. So oh, did they it really? Did, yeah. Every last one. Every wow. one oh of those. It was doing her more harm than good. So it was, wow. cause, you know, you get that, that feeling in your stomach. You're like, oh, maybe I just oh. drank my shake too fast, yeah, you know, but it was the bloating. Everything. It was the inflammation from all of those ingredients. Wow. Um, so now I'm switched to a plant-based, you know, protein, and it's strawberry. So I'm, I can do strawberries, but no chocolate or vanilla. And if I didn't have to do the testing, I wouldn't have known, have known that. that it was definitely causing more harm wow. than good for me. So not all protein is created equal no. for every person. For every person, no. no. Uh, that, that's a big thing. It's super important. You know, I don't like eating big meals after a workout, you know, right. so I would rather have a shake and, you know, mix, you know, my, my creatine with it and <laughs> give the body the nourishment that it needs. Right. You know, so people just have to be a little more open-minded um, and just realize that it's for their own good. And taste is kind of secondary. Yeah, secondary <laughs> I think you kind of get used to it. The palate yeah. changes. You do. That's what I was going to say. You kind of get used to it. The first taste can be terrible, but, you know, you well, we went a through a times, few. Kind of there was a few print ones that yeah. I said, no. Nope. Some, <laughs> some of them, no. The, the, the pea protein one that tastes like sand. The pea protein one was not the best. No. I'll, of course, yeah. down that. I don't care. We're good. But, yeah, you know, no. it I don't really, like sand. I don't really have a, a, uh, a problem with drinking most things, but I've tried the pea protein. It's difficult. Yeah. It was very gritty. <laughs> yes, it's very gritty. Yeah. Like you said, sand. It tasted like, mm -hmm. like I was drinking sand. Absolutely. Yep. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it did. It, and you know, it makes sense to me because I don't like peas to begin with. So, um, so I don't know. But yeah. I just blamed it on that. Yeah. So, Liz. Yes. How can individuals get your food? Very simple. Okay. Real food, real good dot com. Um, you go on there. It's very simple. All of my menu is there. I have breakfast foods, chickens, beef, uh, porks, fish, desserts, soups, soup, salads. Mm -hmm. um, go on there. You click what you want. You can get individualized meals. You get to pick out your sides as well. And then I also have um, trays where you can buy per pound. So those that don't want to cook for their family and then have a separate meal for themselves, you kind of just say, okay, here we are. We have two pounds of chicken today for dinner. And you have your sides, and you could give that to the entire family. Um, I mostly prep my meals Monday mornings, and then by Monday evenings, it would be delivered to whoever orders it. Um, Easy enough. Locally. <laughs> we're, we're a local business. <laughs> so, you know, the whole shop local people? Yeah, yeah, shop yeah. local. <laughs> yeah, Support the small well, businesses. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't get much easier. I mean, I, I use it, and it's, it's so convenient. It's a lifesaver. You know, it's uh, it's it's all clean food. It's delicious, and it's literally I just pick it up on Monday and 
take it home I'm and set eat it. for the week. Yeah, I'm set awesome. for the week. Yeah. yeah, no more excuses. No, no more. Excuses. I don't have the time. And the best right. part is, is I kind of am the one that's doing all the shopping and knowing all the ingredients. So my chicken is pasture raised. My beef is grass fed. My fish are wild caught. Mm-hmm. All of my fruits and vegetables are organic. So, you know, I know every single ingredient that's going through every single recipe. Um, and, it, you know, I, I, I shop more for quality rather than prices. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, it's it's special so you know that what you're getting and what you're eating is going to be good for you that so, is easy that's key and yes, ken, you don't have to do anything <laughs> <laughs> and ken what is the website for crossfit persist uh www.crossfitpersist.com and if somebody wanted to come on over yeah how would they do so absolutely uh you can sign up online to get uh, one of us will get back to you about setting up your first free appointment f- first uh, appointment um, introduction is free mm-hmm. so we'll put you through a little testing in terms of uh, your movement patterns and then prescribe to you what we think is the best method to go whether it be personal training or group classes and then part of that is also a uh, an in-body scan to get your body composition and a nutritional um, guideline as to what your calorie and macro uh, content should be and then if you need more that's where Liz will give you that Awesome. Again, easy. Yeah, easy. love it. Very easy. We like <laughs> easy. Yeah. Yeah. Right? We're all about efficiency. Yeah, absolutely. Easy. Always. <laughs> so if you've liked this podcast, do us a favor and like it. Tell your friends. <laughs> five-star review. Give us a five-star review on Amazon, iHeart, Spotify, whatever device that you're listening to this on. It truly does help us get out more and allows the rest of the world to hear it who may not have already heard it. I would like to thank you very much, Liz and Ken, for being here on the Functionized Podcast. Certainly appreciate you coming out. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. And to all our listening audience, thank you for being here with us as well. Beauty Brains Braun. I'm out. Ken. Have a great day, (laughs) folks. Thank you, Liz. Enjoy your week. Mad Scientist, I am out. You're good. That was fun. You're good. That was fun. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you for having us.